Good morning, everybody. And thank you for inviting us here. First of all, there's a point of order. Retorna is not a foundation. We're often told that we are a foundation, but Retorna is a platform of entities. As we can see, it's a platform from civil society, ecologists, trade unions, consumers, families, housewives, and also part of the recycling industry. We were founded about six or seven years ago with a view to providing drive for environmental policy, such as the deposit policy, in this case, for packaging in Spain, because we think that this whole thing about containers like bottles faces a lot of a large deficit. So a deposit instrument would be a good way of tackling this. I'm delighted to be here in the Canary Islands. This is the second time I've been here. I've got very pleasant memories of the first time I was here. I had the chance to mix a bit of business with policy, and I was impressed, really impressed, with the fantastic landscapes, the natural environment in general here in the Canary Island. Moreover, I've got very pleasant memories because it's the, the last trip that I did with my partner before we had our first child. What I don't remember quite so fondly is that in these wonderful, spectacular natural landscape, sometimes they're even unique, there was an enormous profusion of abandoned cans, bottles, and other containers. It was very normal driving around along the roads and next to the road, and I took the the F took an effort to get out the car and take photos of these th stuff that had just been thrown away. And also because of my job, I also visited a landfill and I could see the so many of these containers in the landfill. In fact, most of what we can see in this picture are containers. Some are drinks containers, but not all of them. And in the worst possible case, they end up being dumped on the beaches, which is one of the major attractions of the Canary Islands. Here we have a photo of a cleanup that we organized in Retorna, along with Climas in Project, which is an organization that works on maintaining the natural environment, in this case of the ocean, free of pollution, free of, of junk like this. It's only it wouldn't be fair to say that this is a problem that you find only in the Canary Islands. It's very widespread. In fact, here in the Canary Islands, this is a, a photo of Barcelona, but of the three million containers that are consumed every day, drinks containers every day, two million do not get sorted. They end up, in the best of cases, in the landfill if they're not just illegally tipped in five million it's five out of nine million we're a little bit better but not we're not that much better this is one of the reasons why the canary islands is currently in breach of the uh, packaging waste directive if we look at any the um, steel aluminium plastic glass is far below the target of 55 percent that was established for 2008 established by by the Packaging Waste Directive. And this is one of the reasons for Retorna to consider a deposit system in order to recover these drinks containers. In our understanding, in order to move towards the circular economy, we need a behavioral change at grassroots level, also to industry administrations, with respect to waste. Instead of considering them as waste, as a pollutant, we should consider them as a resource, something that we need to look after, something that we need to recover. And in fact, this is what the circular economy is all about. We believe that a minor incentive of establishing a deposit system for these drinks containers could help to drive this mental change that we need from considering waste 
as junk as considering as a resource. The deposit system that Retorna is proposing for here for the canary lenses would be a deposit that would be applied to all the main products of drinks. I'm talking about water, soft drinks, beer from 10 cents, and there would be no discrimination between the materials. All the packaging materials would be subject to a deposit. This way, we think that we could reach up to 9% of sorting. The deposit system is something that used to exist before the circular economy. In fact, it's a, an instrument of the circular economy before the circular economy existed. If we talk to our grandparents, they were 30 years ago, they took all the bottles but to get the deposit back. And sometimes they would use the, um, the bottles themselves or cans to fill them with other things. The problem is, is that we forget that it's important to maintain the value of our resources. We now get get used to cheap, or we got used to, we got you so used to cheap cans and bottles that they're not considered as anything valuable. And the UN Environmental Plan includes a deposit systems as one of the most effective instruments in the fight against marine littering, which, as you know, is increasingly on the political agenda on the environmental side. In fact, there are 40 countries that, that have rolled out a deposit system for disposable containers. They start in the 70s. The latest country is Lithuania that's rolled it out just a few months ago. And there are more and more countries that are rolling out systems like this. And there's not a single one of this country has, that's rolled out a deposit system has changed their mind. And this means that it really works. It is offering solutions for waste management. For governments, rolling out a deposit system would also have benefits on the one hand because it, it doesn't cost them anything. The operation of the deposit system is the responsibility of the bottling industry and the principle of the pollutant pays. The, whoever creates a product that becomes a waste has to assume the management costs. But it, it would generate savings with regard to collection, cleaning streets and uh, beaches, and also in treatment in the Canary Islands. We think that all the containers that will be subject to this are causing uh, generating a management cost of some six million euros between collection and treatment. And moreover, if we could recover all of this, this would be worth a further six million. So we're talking about 12 or 13 million euro that we're throwing in the junk just here in the Canary Islands, just because we do not have the right instruments for managing our waste. The deposit system manages, would be managing about 20% of all waste 20% in volume. We usually talk about weight, but quite honestly, the volume, the major volume in the waste are the um, drinks containers. So the deposit system would remove all of these containers from the containers and from the streets and the waste baskets. And obviously, it would generate savings for the local corporations at whatever level you like, because none of these would face any additional costs they would only get benefits. It's a win-win situation. There's also a role for shops because they could collect the used containers. This can be they can be returned manually or automatically. In either case, the shop would be given a certain sum to cover the new role they play as an active stakeholder in the circular economy. The shop is no longer a place where they just. put products on the market that become waste, they also become a waste manager. As far as the packaging, once they're recovered, their, their quality is top quality. One of the problems we just heard about from Joachim Quoden was the problem they have for, for marketing these the recovered materials that are recovered from the sorting plants, but the material that comes from the deposit system are of very high quality, so it makes them far more competitive in the international recycling market. The materials that come from uh, sorting plants and from the waste containers can have 20, 30 percent of reject fraction, which would makes them less competitive on the market, so if we could recover these drinks, cans and bottles would also help to create jobs.
Here in the Canary Islands, we could probably be talking about 300 jobs if we recover all the tons of cans and bottles that are being dug into the landfill. Another factor we need to consider is that these containers that don't end up in the litter bin in, on the beaches, in our streets or in the environment also generate costs because they have to be cleaned up. According to the data that we've been sent from Norway, collecting a tin or a bottle costs between 30 or 50 cents, but if we recover them through the deposit system, it creates wealth. The environment, obviously, this is another of the beneficiaries of a deposit system. We've estimated that rolling out a deposit system in the Canary Islands would generate a 20% increase or in recycling, here in the Canary Islands, they're currently around 11% of recycling. So the deposit system would push this recycling rate up to around 13%. Apart from the, the every ton recovered through the deposit system, except for, uh, in compare in comparison with the yellow bin, reduces the greenhouse gas emissions by 50% according to our studies. And finally, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the deposit system is a highly efficacious system to, to extend the EPR, the Extended Producer Responsibility System. This is not just something that the industry has voluntarily decided to roll out. This is an obligation that was set by the government in order to force producers of a producer that becomes a waste to take responsibility of the financial cost incurred by managing this as a waste product. This is done this way in order to send an economic message to the industry so as so they think about how to manufacture these products and what's going to happen to them at the end of their life cycle to make them reusable, more recyclable, so that they consider that, that they have to be used at the end of their useful life. But right now, this is something that is not happening. If we look at the distribution of costs in waste management here in the Canary Island for drinks, cans and bottles, everything that is collected from sorting, the cost is borne by the industry that markets these products and this is around 8 million. Everything that is not sorted, which in here in the Canary, unfortunately we're talking about most of these containers, it's about 70 percent, and all of this is funded by the public pockets by local duties, and so in the end it's paid for by you and me. So anything that is not sorted here in the Canary Islands costs us 11 million euros a year. So the, the distribution of, of responsibility between industry and the people through our public budgets is very imbalanced, 8 million against 11 million. And just to close, um, or I would if I could, but I can't, because the the remote is not working. We seem to have a glitch here that prevents me from finishing, but I would just, okay. Here we have a summary of everything that we've seen. I won't go into this in any depth, but I would like to close by saying that the next time I come to the Canary Islands, I hope to come with my son, and I'll be very proud if I could tell him that at one time his father took part in a conference that was decisive for rolling out a deposit system for drinks containers, for disposable drinks containers to make the Canary Islands cleaner. I would call on all of you to continue this, discussing this instrument. Thank you very much.